Well, I heard the news at midday today, which said that the price of oil is now $97 a barrel. It has never in the history of the world been that high. Well, when I was at Stanford uh, in 1973, and the oil crisis struck, uh, we suddenly had a course thrown together for us on energy and what, where, how did this problem arise? And they found an old bloke called M. King Hubbard, who was 82 at the time. And he came along and he said, well, I told you so. In 1956, I wrote about this and I said that in 1970, the US would peak in its oil production and then we'd start having to import oil and we'd have a big problem. And it happened. And he was, he was right. As every oil field goes through a production cycle where it rises and then peaks and then falls, the key is when any country's oil peaks, because after that peak point you have to import it. And of course the US being such a huge consumer of oil, as they peaked, suddenly importing oil from the Middle East, OPEC was formed and they started the geopolitics of oil, which we've been in ever since. But what he said then was, this is a small skirmish. The real problem will start early in the 21st century when world oil will peak. And we have 20 or 30 years to get ready for that. So I thought, well, I'm going to be part of that. So almost everything I've done in public life for the past um, 30 years has been to try and help cities get ready for the peak oil crisis, which today I can say has arrived. And uh, it looks to me as though the data shows that late in 2006, global oil production peaked and has been going down ever since. We'll probably bump along pretty much on that same level for a while, but it means we cannot grow at a time when China and India are demanding more and more oil. Uh, and everybody plans or increases in production. Everyone sees aviation as getting bigger by six, seven percent a year. Everyone sees uh, truck use increasing. Everything is dependent on oil. It's not going to, it can't. So we are faced with a crisis. Peak oil is challenging everything that our cities were based around over the past 50 years. But before that, they didn't need it. So it's not like the end of civilization. Uh, we just have to rediscover how cities worked without so much oil. In this last year, panic in the US set in and they started to uh, build ethanol plants all over the place. Uh, and they took 30% of their grain crop and turned it into biofuels. That 30% has has meant that the price of grain tripled around the world. Extraordinary uh, uh, result that could have been predicted, of course, but uh, uh, now they, they won't allow it. Uh, there will be no more of this conversion of food into fuel. But that 30% produced 8% of the US's fuel needs, uh, petrol needs. So it's, it's, it's a small solution and it will help in the agricultural areas. Farmers and their tractors and so on can help to grow their own fuel. Um, there are small solutions like that. Uh, I don't see anything, uh, anything that is a, um, a magic solution, no instant cure that will come along and, and solve this one. We have to learn to use less. Transport is, is a bit like the elephant in the bedroom. It's sort of sitting there and we move around it, uh, we don't disturb it, uh, and uh, after a while you don't even notice it. Um, that analogy, by the way, is from Alcoholics Anonymous, who say the biggest problem about alcohol dependence is to recognise it and see the elephant. Well, we have car dependence, and we don't notice it. We walk around it. And we, ev even within the climate change debate, don't mention it. Um, so in the last year, despite all this uh, incredible awareness, Hummers have been introduced to the Australian motor vehicle fleet. Uh, this is not exactly going in the right direction. 